today we have Prasit Bhattacharya from University of Virginia who will be telling us about the, orient, the EO orientation order of complex vector bundles. Um, thanks for uh, having me here. So I'm gonna indeed talk about your orientation of complex vector bundles. Um, this is a joint work with Hood. Um, and I'm gonna begin with uh, talking about general orientation problems in homotopy theory. And uh, to talk about that, um, I must uh, first talk about um, uh, a space, the Tom space, because that's how we define orientations. So uh, if I take any vector bundle, complex or real, we can define its uh, Tom space as the unit disk bundle mod the unit sphere bundle. And, and then um, uh, let's say R is a, a homotopy commutative ring spectrum, uh, then um, a vector bundle is said to be R oriented if there exists uh, R Tom class, which lives in the uh, Dth R cohomology of the Tom space. Um, well, what is, uh, what is a Tom class? Let me just review it for everyone. Uh, let's say we pick a point of the base space, uh, then uh, over a point, the bundle, pullback of the bundle is trivial. So the Tom space is just the d-dimensional sphere. And for every point P, uh, every point B, we have a, a map to the Tom space. And uh, if we uh, pull back the Tom class along that map, uh, we should get the class one in the zeroth homotopy groups of R as indicated um, in, the, uh, in, in this diagram. Um, existence of R Tom class leads to um, R Tom isomorphism. Um, for example, a cohomological version would be uh, that the R cohomology of the uh, unreduced cohomology of the base space is gonna be equivalent to the uh, reduced cohomology of the Tom space, and the, the equivalence is given by coupling with, with, with the Tom class. Or if uh, R is really nice, for example, structured, which is, if it is E infinity, then we have a space level version of the, uh, of the same cohomological Tom isomorphism. Um, and then there is also a homological version of this uh, R Tom isomorphism. Uh, again, uh, if R is not infinity, just uh, think what it would give once we apply uh, homotopy groups uh, functor to this to, to this equivalence. Um, from visual point of view, uh, uh, or classically, HZ orientation is probably the most uh, relevant one. The first examples that we see is that of uh, Mobius bundle, which is a bundle over the sphere. Think about uh, the complement uh, of the zero section of this bundle and try to assign each component uh, of the fiber over a point, a number plus or minus one uniformly, and you will fail to do that. You see that if you think of green as plus one and white as uh, minus one at some point, minus one uh, merges with uh, plus one, and you can't do this, and this is a classical example. However, two times uh, the, uh, the Mobius bundle is actually orientable. As shown, you can uniformly assign green and uh, uh, white. Three times is not, four times is. What I am trying to uh, communicate over here is that there is a periodic pattern in general. So uh, let's move on to some examples that are relevant uh, to this talk. First is the tautological line bundle. Uh, I'm gonna denote this by gamma one. It's a bundle over CP infinity. Um, this is HZ orientable, KU orientable, but not uh, KO orientable. Um, the, uh, in fact, uh, the obstruction is uh, eta, and which kind of highlights the fact that KO captures uh, some non-trivial element from the homotopy uh, groups of sphere in its Horevix image. Um, but uh, two times the tautological line bundle 
is k orientable and um, um, and in which case we say that k orientation order of gamma one is is two um, one can also study um, tautological line bundles over CPN. Um, James in 1959 showed that uh, they are also periodic in nature. In other words, there is a number which I'm denoting by DCN. So if I, if I take DCN full direct sum of the tautological line bundle over, uh, um, um, over CPN, then it is actually spherically oriented. Um, uh, but uh, this number was uh, computed later. Um, first, uh, Atiyah and Todd in 1960 showed that uh, certain numbers divide DCK. Uh, uh, these are called the uh, Atiyah Todd number. And Adams and Walker uh, uh, went on to show that uh, they're uh, the Atiyah Todd numbers are sort of optimal. Um, Atiyah Todd numbers um, are uh, defined uh, by what, it, what their uh, periodic valuations are going to be. Um, so this is the formula. Um, also, this is a display from uh, 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 an uh, um, uh, unpublished paper that we are writing now. So this is, can be also thought of as a preview to our uh, paper. Um, well, uh, so coming back to uh, um, S orientation of uh, the canonical line bundle, um, uh, we get a um, Tom isomorphism, S Tom isomorphism, which is in this case simply a weak equivalence between um, uh, CPN and um, a stunted projective space. Uh, which is uh, given by this formula depending on the number, the, the Atiyah Todd number. And this is often referred to as James periodicity. Why James periodicity? Because you can stick in, instead of one, any number J in there, positive or negative, and this still this uh, uh, equivalence holds. And if you want to, for example, consider uh, uh, localized spherical Tom isomorphism. In this case, uh, you just take the periodic valuation to determine what the James periodicity is going to be. Um, now I'm going to connect this to uh, chromatic homotopy theory. Um, complex orientation has deep rooted connection with chromatic homotopy theory. Um, so first, uh, a multiplicative cohomology theory is complex oriented if, uh, if gamma one is R oriented. Um, this leads to some calculation. For example, uh, the atiyah herzebra spectral sequence for CP infinity and CP infinity cross CP infinity collapses. And uh, this allows us to connect the theory of formal group law to, uh, to stable homotopy theory um, uh, in a way that leads to chromatic homotopy theory. In some sense, the notion of height in chromatic homotopy theory comes from the notion of height of formal group law. Um, this connection leads to many interesting cohomology theory through, you know, land Weber exactness and other stuff, which uh, most everyone probably knows about and 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 one such family that I'm going to focus on uh, is the Morawa E theories. There is one for each prime p and uh, each height n, uh, where n is a num is a natural number. Um, without going into much details, I'm just going to point out that uh, this Morawa E theories comes from. Uh, Honda formal group laws in number theory uh, and formal group laws uh, have uh, an automorphism group called the Morawa stabilizer group. I'm, I'm taking the big one um, and they act on ENP by ring maps. Well, these are not just any homotopy commutative ring spectrum. These are E infinity ring spectrum and the action is via E infinity maps. So um, when p minus one divides n, 
then uh, the cyclic group of order P is actually a subgroup of the big Morawa stabilizer group. Uh, there are many of them up to conjugation. You pick, pick your favorite one um, and take the uh, homotopy fixed points uh, with respect to this cyclic group of the Morawa E theory and what you get is the EO theory. I'm gonna denote this by EO and P. Um, this is, um, you know, when you consider the case of height one and prime two, you get the complex K theory, at least two completed. And in this case, the Morawa stabilizer group is the units of the two adic integers. And you can see the cyclic group uh, appearing here, Z mod two. And if you take the homotopy fixed point with respect to that, you end up getting the real K theory um, uh, that we all know and love. So the topic uh, uh, of this talk is, uh, is you know, what is the EONP orientation order of gamma one? Before I go on saying anything about it, let me just emphasize the fact that KO sees something in the Hurevik's image. Um, and so this is sort of like a measure of how much EO can possibly see in the Hurevik's image. Um, so our main okay, result can is. Back, can you go back one slide just briefly? I assume your your capitalizations there are attentional here, right? You're talking about the connective. No, um, that's the type. Uh, well, the U is capital. So, uh, I I I just decorated this way, but I meant periodic. Okay, periodic. Okay, fine. Yeah, because you see that E, you know, when I talk about E. Right, that's know. what was confusing me. Because, and you did it again on the next line with the K. That's why it was confusing me because you did it twice. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, uh, all right. But you mean, connect, yeah. you mean periodic, so fine. Okay. I, I mean periodic. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about the confusion. Okay. So, um, so when um, N is divisible by P minus one, let's call the quotient K. Uh, then we show that. EO NP orientation order of gamma one divides P to the P to the K minus one. As a corollary, what we conclude that if I take P to the P to the K minus four direct sum of any complex line bundle, then it should be EO NP orientable. This is a general, this follows from a general theory, which I'm gonna discuss later. And another consequence of this is the following. Um, uh, let us consider MUN to be the Tom spectrum over the degree N map. This is a, a map which you can think of either taking, um, uh, uh, you know, induced by the n-fold block diagonal sum on on U's, uh, or you can think of, you know, if I, if you take a line bundle, um, or if you take any bundle, then the uh, classifying map to the line uh, any complex. Uh, vector bundle, then it has a classifying map into BU. And if you take its n-fold direct sum, then what is the classifying map? Well, take the original classifying map and compose it with this phi n map. And the Tom spectrum over that is MUN. And uh, let us denote um, uh, P to the P to the K minus one by EK. And what we get uh, as a consequence is that we have a homotopy ring map from MUEK into EONP. And this is also follows from a general uh, theory. Um, I also wanna emphasize that we, uh, I, I don't think we can do anything better than homotopy ring map, even though uh, the domain and the range are both E infinity. So, um, First of all, this is this could be a nice exercise in, in, in some algebraic topology course that show that complex vector bundles are all HZ orientable. This is a this is a well known fact. And if the HZ Tom class survives the Atiyah Herzebruch spectral sequence calculating the arc homology of the of the Tom space, um, then uh, we we can conclude that the, the bundle that we started with um, is actually R-orientable. So this is, this, is the, this is the technique that we use. Um, 
um, just a second. I'm trying to collapse all the, okay. Um, uh, okay, so um, uh, keep in mind that the Tom space of n times gamma one is denoted by CP infinity n. So when n is positive, this is just the co-skeleton, the nth co-skeleton collapse CP n minus one in CP infinity. If n is n can also be negative, in which case um, you know there there are descriptions, which is just the extension of uh, uh, CP infinity. Um, but uh, uh, let me tell you about the difficulty that we face. Uh, the difficulty that we face is that we know nothing about UNP in general, you know, except handful of cases. Uh, recently, some progress were made by Goshen, Goshuan, Danny, and Jolie, um, but other than at the prime two for some cases, um, but other than that, we know nothing about it. So what do we do? Um, before I go anywhere, let me, let me emphasize on the key idea. So um, recall that the Hopf algebraid BP star BP is a polynomial with coefficient in BP star and infinitely generated by the elements Ti. And in particular degree, uh, dig the internal degree of Tk to the P minus one, where K is N divided by P minus one, is actually equal to two times P minus one times P to the K minus one, and I use this to define the number BK. Uh, so BK is the internal degree of TK to the P minus one divided by two. And if you calculate the Atiyatod number of, of BK, you get EK, which is P to the P to the K minus one. And I wanna reiterate or, or iterate that uh, this is not a coincidence, in fact, this is the final step of our calculation. Okay, so I'm gonna go deep into this, uh, this connection that I, that I just said. Um, why do we get that? Well, uh, for, from now onwards, you know, just fix a prime P and a height N and let K be the quotient N divided by P minus one. Uh, uh, let's remove the burden of carrying uh, the indices around because we have fixed all these numbers. So E, B, E, and P, E, O, B, E, O, and P, and uh, G denote the big Morava stabilizer group. Um, um, K be the associated Morava K theory, which we can obtain by quotienting out by the maximal ideal of uh, of the homotopy group of E. I'm gonna elaborate on that a little bit later. Uh, it's a periodic theory. Uh, and uh, let zeta be the generator of the uh, cyclic group of order P living inside the uh, big Morava stabilizer group. Um, so the homotopy groups of E is, is a, um, is a power series with a periodic generator U, which lives in degree minus two, and the rest is in degree zero. All the UIs lives in degree zero, and this uh, the coefficients uh, uh, take place in the vitring of field of order p to the n. Um, this is a local ring with maximal ideal uh, generated by uh, p u one up to u n minus one. And uh, so since where the, K, the, the periodic K theory is defined, uh, it turns out that the homotopy groups of the periodic K theory is just E star mod the maximal ideal. So it, it's gonna look like uh, as described. Now, <clears throat> E star um, admits uh, a, a formal group law, the, uh, the universal deformation formal group law uh, uh, induced by, uh, from, you know, the, from the Lubin-Tet theory. Um, and therefore, uh, since BP star is the universal p-typical formal group law, it, it, it gives us a map from BP star to E star, uh, which does the following thing, um, which sends, uh, uh, vi's to ui to the u to the one minus p to the i when i is less than n and u to the one minus p to the n when i is equal to n 
and zero otherwise. So all the uh, VIs for, for I greater than N goes to zero. We also have a map from BP star BP to the continuous maps from the Morava stabilizer group to, to E star. Uh, we can think of this as E star E. Perhaps we have to localize uh, once more to get uh, to, to, to have this description. Um, um, this is, um, and then uh, with this map, you can think of each map, each TI can be thought of as a map from the Morava stabilizer group into this uh, 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 ring E star. The key property of, of this zeta, the generator of CP, is the fact that um, Ti of zeta is zero modulo the maximal ideal if I is between one and K minus one and is a unit if I is equal to K. This is, this is sort of connecting the generator of CP to, uh, to TK. Um, so this is, this, is, this is the first connection. Um, so we begin by studying the action of CP on the periodic Morawa K theory homology of CP infinity, which is just a polynomial with coefficient in K star. This is because the atiyah herzebru spectral sequence collapses, everything is in the even degrees. Um, and, um, this, this is why we can, we can calculate uh, the action of CP on K star CP infinity by studying the action of Steenrod algebra on the homology of CP infinity. Well, Steenrod algebra acts on the cohomology, but you know, homology with FP coefficient is really the dual, vector space dual, so there is an action. And uh, either way, you, can, you, you, can, you, you have a good understanding of this action of Steenrod algebra. So um, there is a map from uh, BP star BP to also the Steenrod, uh, to the dual Steenrod algebra. And uh, what it does, uh, it maps TK to the, the anti-automorphic image of CK when P is odd and at P equal to two, it uh, maps to CK square. And uh, we denote and let PK be the dual of the image of TK uh, in the dual standard algebra. It satisfies the relation that PK to the P is equal to zero. So uh, we can define a subalgebra of the standard algebra, uh, which, uh, which is FP PK mod PK to the P. And we are gonna denote that subalgebra by BK. And the action of BK on the homology of CP infinity is very closely related to the action of the group ring K star CP on the K star homology of CP infinity. And this is what we exploit in our work. So the action of PK on the homology of CP infinity is pretty easy to track. Uh, you know, this is this is uh, all 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 about the action of standard algebra of uh, CP, uh, standard action of standard algebra on homology of CP infinity are well documented. Um, so from this, you get the following splitting. So as a BK module, you learn that the homology of CP infinity it splits into two parts, where M is a finite BK module and factors through actually the homology of uh, uh, the, the BK skeleton of CP infinity. And F is the free part and it's infinitely generated. In fact, if you had, if I had, if I were allowed to use CP infinity minus infinity, then everything would have been free. And this, uh, this M this, this finite BK module comes from the fact that we have truncated ourselves uh, from below at zero. So some of, some of the pieces, uh, which, which if, if I had put some negative cells, I would have gotten free part out of this, uh, this M star, but, uh, but I can't. Um, so, um, 
So from here, we, we, we study this connection and learn that as a K star CP module, the K star homology of CP infinity also splits as two parts. One is the infinitely generated free part and one is a finite uh, K star CP module. In fact, um, uh, oops, I just want to point out that you can also study the homology of CP um, not just as a K star CP, the group ring, but, but also it's dual. Uh, then in that case, we will have, um, you know, it's dual is maps from CP into K star. So you can study the co-module structure of this. And then we also have a, uh, you know, by the same token, you know, we have a splitting like this where M star is finite uh, co-module and F star is a co-free co-module. Now, um, remember that K star CP is actually E star CP mod the maximal ideal. And uh, uh, E star is a local ring. So you can apply Nakayama's lemma uh, to actually get a basis for the, for the free part. So what you learn here is that uh, uh, we, it contains a free infinitely generated E star CP submodule which splits as an E star module, okay? And, um, and the theorem of Hochschild uh, say, says that this, this, this pair this, uh, is, is actually relatively injective, which means that this, 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 this splitting is not just a E star module splitting, but a E star CP module splitting. So from here, we can conclude that as an E star CP module, E star CP infinity is free, uh, infinitely generated free, direct sum uh, a finite um, uh, E star C lower P module. Um, so uh, from here, we are able to conclude that there exists actually a topological splitting. Uh, that is, if you smash EO with CP infinity, it breaks up as F direct sum M, where F is an infinitely generated free uh, E module and M is a finite EO module. So uh, let me briefly talk about this topological splitting. Uh, well, before I do that, let me just say that you can, you can conclude it for any, uh, any CP infinity C and you get a very similar sort of uh, splitting. So the technique that goes into all of this is, is called a, a relative atom spectral sequence and it was developed by Devinats. And, and this is the theorem from our uh, unpublished draft. Um, so which says that uh, if M and N are EO module where M is finite and relatively free, um, I'm gonna explain what relatively free means. Then there is a strongly conver convergent relative atom spectral sequence, which converges to the homotopy groups of EO module maps from M to N. Um, so here, E star EO denote the homotopy group of E smash over EO blank, and E star EO E is nothing but the dual of the group ring E star CP. Um, now, uh, relatively free means that M is actually E star EO, E star EO E mod, uh, co, co module, but then as an E star module, it is free. So that's what it means. So then, then we have a spectral sequence. And um, <clears throat> so, um, from our description, if you if you if you put m equal to e and n equal to CP infinity, you can realize all those maps because the atom spectral sequence collapses. And 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 the main thing that goes in there is the fact that the map from EO to E is actually Galois. This is a, a notion introduced by Ragnes, and he also proved all of these things. That you know, uh, the, what it means by Galois is that 
EO is actually the homotopy fixed point with respect to the cyclic group and E smash over EO with E is actually the group, actually this group ring. Um, we also make use of the fact that E is uh, finite, <coughs> finite and uh, relatively self-dual as an EO module. So these, these two facts go in, in there. So uh, let us just recall the num uh, this, this notation, BK is actually P minus one, P to the K minus one. And EK is the uh, corresponding atia todd number. And we want to study this atia herzberg spectral sequence, um, <clears throat> which, which calculates the EO cohomology of CP infinity. And what we want to show is that this, this Tom class X to the EK actually survives the atia herzberg spectral sequence. We make use of three facts. The first one, is that rationally the Atiyah Herzberg spectral sequence is going to collapse because if you if you rationalize EO then it's a HQ algebra and gamma one is uh, you know HQ orientable and hence EOQ orientable as well so all the Tom classes are going to live and and the spectral sequence just collapses at E two. What this means is that. Um, there is uh, something that came as a notification. I, I'm ignoring it. Um, um, so uh, what I what we can Proceed. conclude is yes. Just this maybe just as a typo, but in the spectral sequence at the top, you want the um, E of star of CP infinity is stunted from with an E. Is there an EK missing in the target? Yeah, to the right. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. There is a typo. Yeah. So the, yeah, of course, this is not going to converge to. <laughs> yes, and then sorry. I guess the same thing just true. Same thing for the uh, for the bottom. Yes, there is a typo. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so, um, so uh, the fact that the rational Atiyah Herzberg spectral sequence collapses allows us to say that some large power of p to the t uh, of p multiplied by uh, uh, of the of the Tom class is going to survive in the in the integral. Yes, there is another comment, I guess, somewhere. I don't know. Okay. Um, That's just the, uh, the what we were just saying. Oh, okay. Uh, oops. Um, so yeah, so some large power of P uh, times X to the EK is gonna survive the, the integral Atiyah Herzberg spectral sequence. Uh, second is, is the James periodicity. The fact that, you know, CP, uh, CPBK is isomorphic to uh, CPEK BK plus EK means that the Tom class is gonna this this Tom class survives spherically so it m might as well be a 2BK cycle so it will not have any it, it cannot support any differential up to certain up to up to 2BK page and also note that uh, we can take the, uh, the, uh, the, the function space from CP infinity C to EO. And because EO is a ring spectra, we have this equivalence. And because we have EO smash CP infinity C splitting, uh, we see that uh, this function space, uh, space also splits um, as FC hat with the, uh, the spanier whitehead relative dual of M. And where FC hat is, 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 is the dual of the direct sum of infinitely many E's. So then it becomes the, the product when you take the dual. And then it's a product of bunch of E's because uh, uh, E is relatively self-dual because EO to E is actually Galois. And then the key step here, which I'm not gonna go into too much details, uh, is the following, that this function space from CP infinity C to EO, you can, you can, you can see all this, uh, each of this free cement. So these are S, S and Fs are, are the uh, projection and the splitting maps of, of each uh, piece of E that you see in this function space and they can be tracked down to a uh, finite, uh, to a, to a sub quotient. 
and and this diagram commutes up to homotopy um, up to homotopy and uh, this is really the key step and some uh, nice arguments uh, I, I would like to say that Hood came up with a, a wonderful argument which shows that uh, if, if P uh, p to the t times x to the ek is a non-zero permanent cycle then this this allows you to say that well then you are forced to have x to the ek as 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 your permanent cycle this is this is rather a tricky argument okay so let me compare it with some uh work recently published of uh of uh, uh vitali lorman nito kichlu and steve wilson this is this. Uh, there are two papers: one published in uh, 2015 and one in 16. And and what they study is is the ERN orientation of gamma one. What is ERN? Is the C2 C is the fixed points of the C2 equivariant Johnson-Wilson theory called EN. And then they show that ERN orientation order of gamma one is two to the n and I believe that they show that this is this sort of like optimal like you cannot have anything less uh, correct me if I'm wrong um, um, and then Han and she in his in their recent work which is uh, which is on archive from 2017 um, showed that there exists an unstructured ring I mean homotopy ring map you know uh, even though um, so there is an unstructured ring map from ERN to EON2. So at the prime two, the the the, the work of uh, uh, Lorman, Kishlu, Wilson uh, uh, shows that that EON2 has orientation order two to the n, whereas we are able to show that the uh, EON2 orientation order of gamma one divides two to the two to the n minus one. So clearly our work is, uh, doesn't produce optimal answer, at least at the prime two, and probably not at the odd primes either. So maybe one can formulate a conjecture that uh, EO and P orientation order would be P to the K probably. That's a, that's a good guess. Now I'm gonna go back uh, to the corollary uh, about the math from mu ek to eo and um, so uh, let me recall some some facts um, one is that uh, if if the canonical line bundle is r oriented then any complex vector bundle is r oriented and then uh, we have a homotopy ring map from mu to r and then there is a generalization uh, 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 of the above result. And the generalization is if n times gamma one is R oriented, then n fold direct sum of any complex vector bundle is R oriented. And then we have a homotopy ring map from MUN to R. And, and this is, I'm, I'm just gonna go into the uh, uh, details of this of this theory. So for our case, you know, once we know what is the EO, so replace R by EO and P, and then N is replaced by EK by our main theorem. So uh, this this generalization can be obtained through uh, Baker and Gottlieb transfer maps. So to describe that. Uh, let me begin by uh, uh, recalling the normalizer subgroup of UN, which is, uh, uh, I'm denoting it by NTN, which is uh, sigma N semi-direct product with U1 to the N. This is S1, U1 is S1. And then you take the co-limit and I denote that by NT. Um, if you take the classifying space of BNT, just from the description of NT, you see that BNT is is this uh, this this uh, uh, e sigma n cross over sigma n with CP infinity cross n, and uh, and and this tells us that this is actually Q of CP infinity where Q is the loop infinity suspension infinity functor. 
So uh, Baker Gottlieb gives us a, a transfer map, uh, which is a wrong way map. Well, you cannot go wrong way uh, unless you're suspended enough. And so you suspend, um, so you take the group ring generated by BU and BNT. These are all E infinity rings. And then there is a transfer map, which is a ring map. Um, and uh, uh, and this uh, this composite, so there is a natural map from B and T to B U because you know N T lives inside you, and the composite is multiplication by the Euler characteristic of the quotient. Well, uh, Euler characteristic of the quotient in this case is one because the rational homology of N T B B and T is same as as B U, uh, and the Euler characteristic just depends on uh, on on the rational homology. So, so we end up getting that this this composite is actually homotopic to identity. Uh, you see that there is a, a problem with plus where I put all this plus, but they all mean the same thing. And plus, you don't have to worry about it because I'm going to remove all of them uh, by taking, let's say, for example, take the map from sphere to to the to the to the group ring before, and take the cofiber, and you can you can get rid of all this plus, and you still get a map like this um, and taking the adjoint and using the fact that uh, uh, BU is an E infinity space, uh, you get a map, uh, you get a map from BU to Q of B and T to Q of BU to BU, and that's gonna be home topic to identity. Okay, so where am I going with this? Well, um, uh, how do we use this theory? Well, if R is E infinity ring, now now here we have to use the fact that R is E infinity. Um, then R orientation um, of a of a complex vector bundle is uh, is equivalent to the following null homotopy. I I didn't quite inter introduce this version of R orientation, uh, but this is this is sort of well known. Um, so uh, B maps into BU, then into BGL1 of the sphere spectrum. There's the J homomorphism, and then use the uh, use the unit map of R to land in the uh, in the units in the class in in the B of the GL1 of the uh, if, of your ring spectrum R. And I'm gonna uh, strongly I'm gonna use the fact that BGL1 of R is an e infinity space. This follows from the fact that R is uh, or, or from the assumption that R is E infinity ring. So, <clears throat> so, so if n times gamma one is R oriented, R orientable, which is you know think of putting E O here, so we know what n is going to be in that case, which is E K. So then we know that uh, this composite C P infinity. So I'm denoting, I'm ab abusing the uh, notation gamma one to denote the classifying map. Then I compose with phi n, that is the classifying map for n times gamma one, compose it with the J homomorphism, compose it with the unit map, and this has to be null. Now, using the fact that R is E infinity, you can, uh, and BU is E infinity, and all these, all these spaces are E infinity, you can extend this map gamma one to, to gamma one tilde on Q of CP infinity. But we just learned that Q of CP infinity is actually B and T. So now I can compose it with the uh, Baker Gottlieb transfer map uh, is null. And one and the thing in blue that you see, we, we just learned that that's homotopic to identity. So we can just remove it and say that BU phi n composed with J composed with the unit, uh, uh, the map induced by the unit uh, map for the ring R uh, is, is null. So what this tells you is that, uh, that, that this, uh, the n times, the universal, uh, uh, universal bundle over BU is actually null. And hence, if, the universe, if n times the universal bundle over BU is null, then uh, it's true for all vector bundles. So, so if I have a complex vector bundle, then this composite is going to be null, and so n times c is going to be R orientable. Further, uh, since the universal 
bundle is R orientable and the Tom spectrum uh, uh, associated to the map J composed with phi n is mu n, uh, we actually uh, have a map which is actually the R Tom class for this Tom, Tom spectrum mu n. Uh, uh, so this is the this is the Tom class, and with a uh, little bit of work, you can show that this has to be a homotopy ring map. So this is how we get our general answer. Uh, let me give you a, a bonus result, um, possibly a bonus result, uh, which is uh, recall that for any R, where R is any integer, we have this splitting EO smash. CP infinity R splits as a bunch of uh, infinitely many copies of E and a finite TO module. Um, and uh, you, can, you can show using James periodicity um, and some techniques using relative atom spectral sequence that this, this, uh, uh, this, this MR actually factors through EO smash CPN where this capital N do not depend on this number R. So uh, with all of that, uh, we can arrange for a co-final collection of such maps. Uh, for example, I, I put the finite part on the top and this is the, this is the map going to EO smash uh, you know, CP infinity KR and, and then it's projecting onto the free part and we can make this diagram homotopy commutative. Um, let's say I pick K large enough uh, 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 so that this maps on the finite because, because all of them factors through finite CP and we are expecting this map, a map to be Zero. We can probably choose a large K so that this 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 map at the level uh, on on the on the compact part is is zero, you know, um, uh, and if we can do so, uh, we are not. I, I'm not sure yet if if we can, but if we can, uh, then we can calculate the the Tate's S1 Tate spectrum of EO which can be described as the inverse limit of CP infinity minus N. So in the previous diagram, I'm gonna take the inverse limit and hope that limit and the limb one of the, of the compact part is zero. And uh, if, if happens, this is this just a conjecture at this point, then it's just gonna be a bunch of products of E, uh, one for each natural number. And, and this is where I'm gonna end my talk and 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 this is uh, an advertisement for the paper that is coming soon thank you i'm going to unmute everyone so we can and we have time for questions if people have them what about our but hang on a second sorry i uh muted you to cut down the background noise but go ahead um, what about RP infinity? Have you guys <coughs> that at all or? Um, I, no, uh, RP infinity is, is going to be difficult. Um, um, I don't know. This technique doesn't go through because of the relative atom spectral sequence. You know, one of the, uh, one of the assumption was it has to be relatively free. Hmm. Uh, so that, that condition is violated. So it's going to be difficult. Maybe one can use, you know, uh, the final result that we have here. Maybe maybe um, use this result to go to RP infinity. I don't know. Well, I think that so at odd primes, RP infinity isn't very different from CP infinity. From yeah. Right, except times you want to use B sigma p or something. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, so we don't know anything about B sigma p, right? But uh, at, at the prime two, uh, you know, Vitali and uh, you know, this me too and Steve Wilson know about RP infinity quite well. But yeah, at odd primes, we don't know anything about CP right now. Okay, other questions?
Okay, if not, I'll remind you our next meeting is in two weeks. Gu Chuan Li will speak and I'll unmute everyone so we can thank him one more time. Okay. Rasik, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. For the, yeah. the talk. That, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. You know, like, yeah. Just, just curious, how did you kind of start your collaboration with Hood? How did that kind of get? Underwear. Um, that, uh, well, this went goes back to Denver. I think Hood was asking how, 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 how we can understand, you know, the, the, uh, action of Morava stabilizer group on the e-homology of. CPU. What do you mean Denver? They're not Denver actually, uh, Boulder, sorry. Oh. Um, a okay, a conference. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. So then I had some ideas from what I did previously and, mm -hmm. and, and then over the years, you know, things ex we exchanged back and forth and finally, you know, this is, this is, this is, this is how it all started. And then, you know, who'd, who'd had a plan, he was into orientation and like, okay, let's, let's get into this seriously. And then something happened. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, all this right. Is pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. Thanks again. Hi. Okay, thanks. Bye.